Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Millie Automotive and today we have a performance diesel on the channel. Hooray! I love a diesel, I'm not going to lie. So I love the fuel economy in them, but I don't like the throttle response. So my daily is a 335D X-Drive Touring. It's about 10 years old now, three litre straight six. And although it's 0.2 of a second faster than this, I'll get into the details on this in a moment, I actually prefer this. And it's amazing for me to see how far diesel engines have come in the last sort of 10 years. So let's talk statistics on this. This is an SQ5 Sportback. So we've got the sloping back on the side. So it has a 0 to 62 time of 5.1 seconds. It has 700 newton meters of torque and 341 brake horsepower. This is a very impressive car. Now I'm going to take you around it, show you the inside, the interior is beautiful. Then we're going to go for a drive because it's all about the driving, isn't it? And how it performs. So let's go. About the look of this car to Audi whoever spec this car did an absolutely amazing job because it's absolutely beautiful this is district green which is a metallic paintwork optional extra which is around 700 pounds I really like how it contrasts with all the chrome we have around I know some people prefer their cars to be all blacked out but I think this is a really nice vibe and I think it looks beautiful the front of this car looks great I'd say it's quite subtle we've got the SQ5 badge which is quite small with silver mirror caps, which are very nice. With the wheels, we get 20 inches in the black edition and 21 inches in the Vorsprung edition. I really like these wheels. So I grew up with 4x4s and we had early X5s, early KNs, that's what I was around. Now for me, this Q5 was always a large SUV. It was always against the KN, against the X5, but now it seems to have shrunk quite a lot, especially with it being a Sportback. I'd say this is more McCann size now. So I'll show you what it looks like now against my 335D. It looks almost the same height from the back, and I know it's obviously taller, but it's tiny. But I think I like that it's quite small because cars are getting so big now, and if you need the bigger car, you've got the Q7. Right, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. The back of this car looks amazing, and I really like the sport back. I've been seeing a lot of them on the road. I think it looks really sporty, and I know you do lose that practical element having it the sport back. I think either way, they both look really nice, and it just depends on personal preference. But the main elephant in the room are these exhausts. Now, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if they were fake. I didn't realise until I actually... <laughs> got out when the guy delivered it I basically was like wow that sounds amazing for a diesel and then I went to drive it and I was like god this really does sound good and then I've parked up and I was like looking at the exhaust and I was like ah those valves are really shut aren't they looked on the other side ah it's plastic so these are actually fake exhausts which is a bit of a shame we've got double exhaust under here running here but these are fake now I know Audi S normally do have quad exhaust and it is a diesel and we have problems with emissions nowadays. I do like the sporty look of this and I think it's completely down to personal preference. Would you rather not have the sound, which I'm going to rev up in a minute, or would you rather lose the sporty essence of it? it is this car trying too hard to be a petrol? I'll leave it up to you to decide, but I actually don't mind the fake exhaust tips because I think they look really nice. They look sporty and it's a sporty car, so it adds to it a bit. Now it is a shame, obviously, but comment down below and let me know what you think. go for a drive let's talk about price so standard this car is just over sixty and a half thousand pounds with extras it's sixty five thousand seven hundred and fifty five those extras include the paintwork comfort and sound pack 
storage pack and tow bar which is folding which i'll show you now in terms of boot space we've lost about 40 liters from the normal q5 so the normal q5 is 550 liters and this is 510 now i've got a labrador and he has been fitting in this absolutely fine no issue with the boot space i mean it's a little bit cramped at the top for him but other than that it's a really generous size boot still. Right, so on this car, we actually have a retractable co bar as an optional extra. So you just press the button here and it pops out and then you just pop it back up, push that again to go down and you have to push it like that. Right, so I think it's time to go for a drive now, but I thought I'd just touch on the interior first. So in the back, there's plenty of room. My niece was absolutely fine in there. Loads of room in the back. Um, the seats are really easily adjustable as well. You can fold them up really easily and just put them down so it's completely flat for more space in the back if you need it. We also have absolutely beautiful seats, like beautiful. The stitching on these is so premium. They look like they should be in something on another scale, basically. The only thing that does let it down is the fact that we don't have any leather on the dashboard, and that is a bit of a shame. But for the price you're paying in the car, this is a very luxurious car. And I love the fact that we still have physical buttons as well. So as I said, we have physical buttons for basically everything. And I know that is a big hurrah for a lot of people. This is how you can turn the volume up and down. Simple and effective. We also have buttons on the steering wheel for whatever you need. And the steering wheel is finished in a really lovely leather. You'll be glad to hear the screen just isn't too big and it works really well. There's not really any glitches and I've just been using the Apple CarPlay most of the week. Now we have front and rear cameras which work up to about 10 miles an hour, which is really handy. And we also have a big chunky gear selector with the S logo embedded. Right. Drive system active. Uh, the door. These doors are actually really heavy. Why are you beeping at me? The door is shut. The door wasn't shut. Ah! Ah, it's all beeping, it's all going off. Okay, I will say that door is really, really, like, really heavy. Um, I just use normal force as I normally would with a car, but I can't seem to shut it. And I don't know why and it keeps happening, but I mean, it's really good you've got heavy doors because it means the car's built solid. But that's the only thing that has been annoying me this week is I can't shut the door and it likes to beep. But don't new cars just love to beep at people? Why just stop beeping at me? Just chill out. Just calm. Let's talk about modes. So we have off-road, efficiency, comfort, auto, dynamic and individual. So we've got plenty of road modes. Plenty of roads. We've got plenty of modes, really. Um, I've been having an auto or dynamic because I've wanted to test out properly, but I have also had it in eco mode. Right, let's pop it down, ready? In manual. I'm sorry, but that instant throttle response is incredible. I'm genuinely saying this. If I didn't know this was a diesel, I would think it was petrol. It, the diesel engine is that good. Like my 335 has, it's luggy, it takes time. It's like, oh, am I going? Okay, I'll kick back and I'll go. And it goes and all that torque fuels it. Now, this is just complete, complete instant power. So manual dynamic. Oh, it's just so good. Honestly, this car is so good on the road. It's amazing to drive. It's such a good diesel engine. Now let's talk economy because this is something else I've been absolutely, completely impressed with. So I've had it in a run and I had uh, probably about 40 miles. I had it in a mixture of eco mode, uh, dynamic and auto. And I got 40 miles per gallon, 40. That is incredible. I am so chuffed with that, honestly. Uh, I'm really, really enjoying this car and I think it's a fabulous car for if someone is driving long distances every day and they don't want, they want a diesel, they want something a bit economical, but they don't want something that is boring, basically. Ah, oh, this is good fun. Oh, I made my stomach go a bit then. <laughs> Ooh, 
that was actually <laughs> that. now i came from a gti tcr and i had all that instant horsepower throttle response and coming to the 335d i miss that instant throttle response and also the sound so for me this having that throttle response and also having the fake engine noise i'm not mad about i like the engine noise I think this is a fabulous daily driver for someone that doesn't want to skimp on performance but wants the economy because 40 miles per gallon in this is brilliant and that's in dynamic mode. I mean, this is why I love a diesel and I know it's such a shame we don't have many diesels anymore because of emissions and things, but it's so nice to have a diesel on the market and a good performance diesel on the market. This is absolutely quick enough for every day i mean not 62 and 5.1 seconds is a fabulous time especially for a car this size the styling of it is absolutely beautiful it's i'd say it's quite subtle i mean the exhaust make it look sporty and i know they're not real um but i think if you got it all blacked out or something that would look cool as well oh my gosh when i started driving a few days ago there was a ladybird in the car and it went like in the steering wheel somewhere and I couldn't find it. I've just seen it on the window. Is that meant to be good luck? I think I should free it. Oh, no, I think I should free it. Uh, I'm not gonna put the window down because I'll squash it. <laughs> oh, pff, little ladybug, it needs to go out. It's been in here for days, poor thing. The little ladybug is free. Be free. This ladybug really likes this car. Ugh. Okay, it's gone. Live a happy life, ladybug. Let's get back to the car review. <laughs> right, let's go. Yes, yeah, so if you don't like the sound, oh, this car is just so raw, it's such good fun. If you don't like the sound, you can easily turn it off. If you put it into efficiency or comfort, you see the difference. It's not really any sound couple of negatives in terms of tech is we don't have the adaptive cruise control radar cruise control and we don't have the lights on the mirror that warn you if people are in your blind spot although the visibility in this car is really good the windows are really big you don't feel squashed with it being a sport back and even in the back you don't feel like you're squashed i remember my dad had a sirocco r and we went on a journey in it and I got the most car sick I ever had because it was so sloped down at the back. But this, I don't feel like that because it is more raised up. Um, it's so weird how it feels small. The flappy paddles are a little bit small. I always say that with most of Volkswagen Group things, I wish that the flappy paddles were slightly bigger, but you can always put extenders on them if that's the thing that worries you. We are in efficiency right now. I'm gonna put my foot. We're in efficiency and it still has that instant torque, instant throttle response. Bravo to Audi because this has made me have a new love for diesels. I'm not gonna lie. How did diesel engines get so good? Oh, it's gonna take a picture of me. What the heck? So there we have it, my review on the SQ5 Sportback and I have thoroughly enjoyed this car this week. It wins on economy, it's not too bad on price and performance, it definitely wins. It's got that instant throttle response you really want and you often don't get in a diesel. Now, the bad bits of it is a bit cheap feeling at the front and also we've got the fake exhaust with the fake exhaust sound. Comment down below and let me know what you think. I love this car and I especially love the spec. It's absolutely beautiful. Make sure to comment, like and subscribe and until next time, see you later guys.